Hey guys, thought I'd uh, do a little video on this Bluetooth scanner I got. Got in the mail from uh, OBD Innovations off of Newegg. Not that bad of a device. It was not too bad. See through. <laughs> so, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna put it in the car. I'm gonna see what it does. I'm also got a app on my Android phone called Talk. It's got the Talk Pro. So I need to do more things than just a free version. But if you're just going to clear codes, free version is all you need. I'm going to bring it over to the car. I'm going to plug this thing in and see what it can do. Car is a little noisy right now. Got the AC running, so I'm going to die. Alright, I'm in my... Let me turn down this AC. It's actually... AC actually works and everything. I fixed it. Yay. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. See, my car is actually on right now. I will turn it off because you have to turn it off before you can do this. So this is the scanner. With a little bit of light. Better light here, so I'll let you look at it. I got the V-Gate scanner. As you can see, you can see right through it if you look in the sun, right? It's the entire thing. Plastic's not too bad. Pretty sturdy. It's supposed to be dropped a few times, it'll probably break. I don't think it'll break anything inside, so pull it back together. So, anyways, let me, uh, comes in a handy dandy little <laughs> uh, bubble wrap. I just want to show you a couple things that it does come with. And the price tag on this one here was $9.99. And I'll show you the order form here. $9.99. No shipping. Right to your door. OBD Innovation. Obviously I'm covering my address here. I need no unexpected visitors, thank you. Make sure when you do this you get the ELM 327 version. And there's also other versions, so this is a version 2.1. I think it's a version 1.5. So I'm assuming it's older, so you know, try to get the newest one you can. Uh, I can't see that right, but that is the whole name that they have there. I'm using the Bluetooth. There's also a Wi-Fi. Uh, which actually I think if you have a iPhone, I do not think the Bluetooth version works for any of those. And I do not think they actually have the Torque program for iPhone. Actually, I'm almost positive they do not. A friend of mine was looking into that. But it comes in some nice little, you know, packaging, anti-static. And it comes with some instructions. So before I get into using the thing, <clears throat> look at some of the instructions it comes with, you know, it tells you, obviously you don't uh, park your car in the garage and close it and turn on your car or you'll die. But well, gives you the instructions, you know, what to do, pretty straightforward, you know, you have to put in a password, which is one, two, three, four, or it could be something, I think it was like all the zeros, I have right down here at the bottom. So if you uh, forgot the password, now you know it. So anyways, that's the instructions it comes with. Doesn't have to be too much, so there's not a whole lot to do. So plug it in and go, basically. Comes with the there, little card here. It tells you they have a 100% uh, factory uh, satisfaction guarantee. I think they gave you 30 days, if I'm correct. Uh, somewhere on there, I'm pretty sure it said 30 days. Make sure it's brand new when you send it back or whatever. There you go, there's a return right there. 30 days! Satisfaction guarantee. Not too bad, they actually put the number on here, so... It would be too bad if it comes if they put the number. So anyways, to begin... Actually, let me, um... I have a phone ready. Obviously, turn the car off. I'm in the car because it's, like, very hot out there. But I will get out for one second.
Because you gotta find your port. Your OBD2 port. It will look like this. It'll be somewhere in there. New cars may have a little flip down thing. You might have to get into to get under it. Sometimes they're in your uh, ashtray area. But anyways, let's take this. Obviously, line it up to which way it goes. Plug it in. You're gonna get a power. Oh, I hate that noise. So sorry for that. I'm gonna get back in the car so I can actually get rid of that noise. And without doing anything, you get the power light on. I'm gonna tell you, like the uh, normal ones, and I'll turn the ignition so all the lights come on. That stupid noise will go away. Something on my screen there. Dust got on there. Now it's not going to do anything. You can actually read the fault co fault, uh, fault codes at this time, or you can turn it on and read it too. I'm going to my phone now. I can't do this quickly. It's really hot now. Find the talk program. That's the talk program I bought the Pro. So click that one, and it's going to come on. Actually, if you want to put your GPS on, it's going to come in there, just, you know, click that on. And go back to it. Now, you can see when it's first starting up, these things will be blinking if it hasn't connected. If you look at it down there, it will be connecting. So, you know you're connected to your phone. So, that's all connected when they're all blue. I mean, now, you can set up uh, my profile for the GMC truck that I'm in, and to do that, actually, you know what, wait this moment, I'm going to actually turn this car on, because it's hot as anything in here. So, but you're going to notice, though, I'm going to try to set it up so I can get your reps. Hold on one second. Now, it's not exactly, you know, real time. A little bit of slack involved there, so when I turn it on, you'll see. Oh, actually, today it looks like it was right on clue. Right on clue. Huh, Q. So it's actually on there. I need to turn on the AC from there. It just got to about 90 degrees in there. So as you can see, the car is on. Revs are going. Let's see if I can. Give me a second. Let me get this stand real straight. Get side by side. See the revs are going. And see it about that. If I give it a little gas. I'm right on the money today. Yesterday it was slagging. <laughs> Guess it's nothing to harm it is. The AC has to be on. Let's see, I'm at 2000. I pretty much went with it. So that's a good thing. So, obviously, there's a lot more than revs. So, if you, you can either run this, like I said, to check the fall code, you can do it with just the ignition on a little bit. Or you can do what it's running, it really doesn't even matter, it's pro, this thing will do it either way. Um, I should have some safe fault codes in there. Sometimes it's a slow, sometimes it's a little quicker. You'll click that one here. Or you can press that or uh, scan for the codes. Or if you come up here to the man, oops, I accidentally hit the thing. Well, it's going to scan for it. So, look at me. Try to get my beautiful face out of there. So it does take a few minutes. Well, that's going. Just gonna put this down. You know what I mean? Not exactly the easiest thing to put down. So you see, it's a 60, 70 percent. Not too long. It takes a few minutes. It's like scanning all the scanners in there. I like when I'm little. Probably the cheaper ones that you can buy in the store. 
So it still is at the bottom, no faults. I know that because I already corrected all mine. But if I go into my menu, um, and I can load the fault log that was there before, you can see that was uh, what it was. If you click on that, it'll tell you. The last uh, fault log was. Now, if you click on that one, it's going to give you more information. And if it's not got all the information you really want to see there, there's actually an option to do a web lookup. Watch will let you choose your application you want to use for that. And it's going to go into um, this web server called DT. Search.com. Um, blow it up a little bit, and you'll see mine's in the GM. So obviously, I would go over there to the GM, and it's tell you that's a camshaft, a crankshaft, position, correlation, fault condition, which is true because I was putting my camshaft, um, in my distributor back in, which is truck. If anybody knows that, uh, I think it's either 97 and up, or 98 and up, or 96 and up. Not quite sure. But the timing is not done by the normal old method. You have to actually time the camshaft, which is not actually too hard. I'm actually going to do a video on that at some point, too, show people how to correctly do it, because there's so much misinformation out there. It's ridiculous. So anyways, that's that. Oh, one other thing. If you go down to the bottom of that page, it's going to give you a link to the um, obdcodes.com. Actually, click on it. There it goes. We'll bring you to that website, and you'll get even more information. So, not a bad thing there. Just go down, you can find it. There's a, the GMC one right there. Kind of loading I'm outside my house, so Wi Fi is a little bit slow right now. Hey, look, you can actually get that guy if you need some help. So, anyways, let me get back to. Yep, there you go. Let me get back to that. So, back to the talk program. Um, when you first get into it, it's going to ask you to set up a profile. So, you'll actually... Uh, oh, my God. Hold on a second. Let me find where that was. Alright, these won't be here. <laughs> these are obviously the ones I put in. It'll ask you to create a profile for the first time. So, it's going to ask you no profile name. You, pop, you know, put your car name in there. How size, what size your engine is, you know, in liters, you know, is it a 2.5, 5.0, on the 5.0. You can look at your total variable weight, which you'll, you know, you'll find on your door. Up on the door of your car, on the side there, when you open it up, and you'll find that, you know, what kind of gas tank, fuel tank capacity. I'm sure you can usually find that in your car manual. You know, and obviously how much fuel you got in the tank, you know, just look at that. Uh, your maxed out RPMs, which is obviously on your car over there. So you just look at the max one, you know, mine says it's at 6, so I put 6,000 there. Your car may differ. You know, how much your gas costs, and all this other stuff. Then you can also go into the advanced timing, which is to do a whole bunch of bluff, dark, of all sorts of other crap. So you set that up. Not gonna say that, obviously. And then eventually, when you come back, your profile will be there. And then the good thing is, you can set up multiple profiles. So, like with my sister's or my daughter's car, so I can just click on those and go into those, and all the gas and fuel tank stuff, anything will be in there. Now, if your adapter's acting funky, you can always go in here. Or if you want to just make sure that's running right, or get the, all the names of the adapter manufacturer, this thing will go in there and it will tell you everything about it. You know? So that's good. Just back out of that. And if you need help actually doing this talk program, you can hit the help, it'll bring you to the internet. And on it, it's going to bring you to the talk week. Uh, 
wiki, yeah, wiki, 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 I guess you call it. I'm not sure what the hell the heck is going on with that. Probably should have turned off the Wi Fi. A little far away. Oh, please slow today. But anyways, I will bring you to the getting starting page for this program. And then you can go in there and read everything about it. It's got everything on everything of it. So, once you've done that, now the graphing and the test results, I've only done a little bit on that, but that has to do with your, um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that just told you how to pick the right graph for your graph data. That one. Test results, I mean. I did this, I uh, probably went about 30 miles. I was trying to do the uh, average miles to the gallon, how much it would cost. So you put how much the gas is, all that in there when you first set up the profile. And it takes that and runs off by GPS how far you've gone. And then it kind of breaks it down for you. So then you get into that and figure out how much you know you're spending per mile. Now, for the map. Now, this is the trip I was just talking about. I did, oh, I'm sorry, I did 23 miles, something like that. But if you do that, it's going to graph it, and it'll tell you how fast you were going each each time, and it does, uh, I believe there's some other stuff you can do in there. I haven't fully figured that out yet. But it'll map the whole thing for you. That's just more you know, fun stuff to do. Now, for the fun stuff, it's in the real time. This is going to give you all sorts of data. Revs, your speed, so when you're actually going. Now the revs. I'm revving it up right now. I see it going. So, it actually, right now it's actually working pretty good. Tell you coolant, uh, vacuum, throttle. And if you really uh, want to have fun, you can go 0 to 60 and test that or. Kilomiles or a quarter mile time, eighth mile time, all sorts of stuff. Um, this was already on. This is the mission readiness, so you can actually see if uh, the car will pass. I guess. Um, I set this one up when I was trying to do something. I was trying to try to advance for the crankshaft, but it's just telling me a time in advance. No way to tell, it's just going to tell you what it is. There's no way to change that. So, trying to do your crankshaft, this is not going to work. Well, this program right here is uh, pretty much every sensor that I can pick up, it's going to tell you the information on right here. So your GPS. Just run it through, you see O2 sensors. You see the voltage in them. So instead of getting down there and testing, it makes it real easy. That's pretty much everything there. Now, on this here, that is a coolant dial. You can actually customize every page. And, um, uh -oh, delete display. So when you come to it, there's nothing there. So just hold it for a second. Hold it for a second. It's going to pop up, add a display, you know, whatever flavor one you want right there. It, you know, whatever you're doing, raw data, all sorts of stuff. Um, if you just click one, I'll do this one here, half dial. And you better choose whatever graph you want to do. I think I figured out the green ones is the sensors that you have that you'll be able to use. The ones are black. I don't think they're going to be able to do because I don't have these sensors in there. I know I don't, so I'm pretty sure it's just the green ones. Yep, see, so engine coolant, engine load, engine RPM. So when you find one that you want to use a graph for, say I'll use a. Uh, Take air temperature. You can choose tiny, small, medium. It will do a medium graph. It'll go on there. Now you can actually take these things and uh, hold on to it for a second. Uh, where's the move one? 
move display, you can move it up over there, and you can add more to it if you want. So grab something different, you know, do a bar graph on something. if you want to. You can just keep on adding them, adding them until you fill it up and even like seven pages that you can actually just switch back and forth to. I'm going to do a compass. Throw a compass in there. And it'll just keep on going. So anyways, that's my review on this talk program. Pretty nifty, pretty decent. I have not tried any of these yet. I just got my truck back together, so I'm not ready to do that yet. When I do, I'll have to do a video on that. That ought to be interesting. Phone's making noises at me here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this is actually the voltage of uh, one of the old two sensors. So you can see that it's working. It's moving right along. If you rev it, actually, uh, it actually starts to change. I'm at about 2,000 on the rev right now. So you can see it changing as you go. I've not checked what that's supposed to be, but I suppose that'd be a good idea to do that. Um, you can also set this thing up to do like a speed or something, a big dial or whatever. If you, uh, I don't know if I want to trust that though. A little bit of a lag time. Well, this is the only program I've tested so far. I have some other ones on there I haven't tested yet, but I will test those and do reviews on those too. But this is the Talk Pro version, which I paid uh, five bucks for. So the whole setup is 15 bucks. I mean, it'll erase your code, it'll do whatever you want. I forgot to tell you that. You can go in here and tell them, you know, clear the fault. They don't clear them, no problem. I don't have any clear, so I can't do that. Now you can save your fault log, load the fault log after, uh, do a freeze frame data. Gotta give it a second. I've done this yet, so let's see. Let's see if it does anything. Oh, no freeze. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what? That's only if you have fault. That's my bad. I forgot about that. That'd be like in, uh, like, uh, might be able to do it with, like, this here. Maybe on this one. Let's see. I think it's still trying to read the <laughs> still trying to read the car. So that's not good. So it's only um obviously when you're having a fault and it's showing it. But um overall, not a bad program, not a bad little tester. I mean fifteen dollars, I spent over a hundred and something dollars on one and basically the only thing it does is clear codes and look the codes and stuff like that. I wish I would have had this, you know, I buy that like eight years ago. <laughs> Still works, but oh, one other thing. You can actually get other plugins. These are the currently ones. I'm not fully done this yet either, but I was looking into it. I think some of them you gotta you gotta pay for some of them. But I think there's some specific plugins. You can go on this website. Um, it's actually the same website for the torque. And you can see um, this whole bunch of different kinds. If you scroll over to the right, you'll see it says Google Play, and it's got that little. Uh, uh, lock on it, that means you gotta pay. Let's see if there's one without the lock. See, there's no there's none without the lock right here. That's for some uh, Hyundai one. So if you go on Google Play, let's see. Let me see, make sure I got that right. See, like shift lights, wallpaper, whatever. Um, go back up to that a little really quick. What's that first one I found? So let's see if we'll, we'll go on Google Play and see what it does. Why not? I think you know a little quicker would be really nice. Oh, not too bad. No, they lie. It's 4.99. 
<laughs> so I'm not sure what that lock means. Maybe that was old. But this one's saying it's four ninety nine. So I guess for you know, if you had needed that for to read your stuff, it wouldn't be that bad. But I know why that lock is on there. It's interesting. What does that do? Click one with the lock on it, and we'll find out. Oh, awfully slow. Try to take my Wi Fi off. Do the 4G be faster? Wi Fi is slacking. And again, I guess I'll add that backwards. The ones without the lock on it, I'll, you have to pay for it. The ones with locks, uh, apparently you can just install them. So I'll add that backwards, I apologize. I looked at that really quick before. So, apparently the ones with locks. Uh, no, that's not true. You got a trial and a free one, full one there, so I'll click on whatever the heck that is. My theory's right. No, that's a dollar ninety nine. So I don't know what the hell that lock thing means. Don't even make sense. Some are free, some are. I guess you just gotta go in there and click them and see if they're free or not. I don't know, maybe they changed it before or after. I don't really know. That didn't make much sense to me, but, anyways. Enough of that silliness. So that's the program. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little review I had of it. I'm going to do some other ones. I did uh, one for the, on the web, too, when you're going to buy this stuff. Um, also, remember this. When you go in there, quit that program. If you don't, that Bluetooth will stay on. The GPS will stay going. And it'll just keep on looking and go in there. And make sure you turn off your GPS, too. If not, it will kill your battery real quick. I can't know you'd be better maybe beeping at you. So that's the program, we like it. So I shut it off. When you shut it off, it actually uh, shuts that thing down too. So I'm gonna get out of this car before it gets hot again. So if you like it, you know, please subscribe. Let others know that you like it. Give me a little thumbs up. That'd be awesome too. I appreciate you looking at my videos. Thank you.